Hey guys, it's Sandro here. In today's video is a direct comparison of two popular ceramic coatings in the form of Kamikaze Miyabi Coat and NV Nova Evo. So both of these coatings are going to be placed head to head in an attempt to discover and share information about their user experience, look, feel, hydrophobic behaviour, chemical resistance and overall value, so that when it comes time to buying one you can make a well informed decision. And based on the fact that both of these products are rather expensive and sold as premium ceramic coatings from two well respected brands, I thought this would be a well matched and interesting comparison. Now as I'm applying these coatings to a couple of test panels, the first panel being a single layer of each coating and the second panel being two layers of each coating, I'll just share what I've discovered about their user experience while testing them out side by side over the last couple of weeks. Starting with Kamikaze Miyabi Coat, this is undoubtedly a nice coating to work with. It's not particularly thick or thin in its consistency, but it does spread into the panel with ease, and after the coating is given a few minutes to bond and flash to the paint, it's relatively easy to level down, and would actually be one of the better coatings I've applied in that respect. It does seem to be a slower flashing coating compared to most, which means in colder climates you will need to give it a bit more time before wiping it down but in hotter climates it's very forgiving to apply, so much so that even if you leave it on a little longer than you should, within reason, it will still tend to wipe down without too much fuss. In slight contrast, Nova Evo is obviously thicker in its consistency and as such it does have a bit more grip as you lay it down and spread it into the panel. But as nice and easy as Miyabi Coat is to level down with your microfiber cloths, Evo is perhaps a touch easier in that respect. And I'd even say that it's about as easy as any ceramic coating to level down, perhaps bar optimum gloss coat which is just freakishly easy to wipe down. The other difference with Evo is that it has an instant bond to the paint, so you don't need to guess or estimate flash times, just work it into the panel thoroughly and immediately wipe it down, which does make it doubly easy, especially for inexperienced users. But a clear similarity between these two coatings is that they are both slow curing coatings, so just like Miyabi Coat, you can in many cases leave Evo on the paint for a little longer than you should and still come back and wipe it down even if you missed a high spot without too much fuss. So all in all, both these coatings with their slower curing chemistry will be at the upper end of the ease of use scale when you compare them to most other quality ceramic coatings on the market. Apart from that, it's probably also worth mentioning that Kamikaze does tend to recommend layering Miyabi Coat while well, MV tends to recommend Nova Evo as a single layer coating. Now since both these coatings are slower to cure than most, and it's starting to get a little colder here in Melbourne, I actually gave them two weeks before the testing. Starting with the applicator cloths, they both actually hardened up extremely well and were perhaps a touch stiffer than most other consumer based coatings. But as far as the comparison goes, I honestly couldn't see a real difference between their hardness which as I mentioned was really great and encouraging with both coatings. So after allowing the coatings enough time to fully cure, the first test was evaluating the ability of these coatings to add gloss and saturation to further boost the look of automotive paint. I'll start by saying that Miyabi Coat has actually done a really good job here at adding very noticeable and improved levels of gloss and saturation to this panel, as you can clearly see the difference of improved darkness and richness that it's been able to achieve on this black hazed panel. 
However, when you compare it to Nova Evo, I really don't think there's any denying that Evo is just on another level here, with quite outstanding improvements in added gloss and saturation that have also largely masked the existing haze to really take this paint to another level. Now as we have a look at the red test panel with two coats of each coating, I know it's a little harder to see the results on camera, but I think Miyabi coat looks much better here, with quite a noticeable improvement with two coats compared to one. While Evo maybe looks a touch better with two coats, but it's not a massive difference compared to the single coat. So what I would say, also based on applying these coatings on various other panels while testing them out, is that Miyabi coat really seems to benefit from a second layer in relation to its look, while Evo didn't as much. And to be fair, Evo is recommended as a single layer coating, while Miyabi is recommended as a layered coating, so it kind of makes sense, and my testing seemed to confirm that. But I also think it's fair to say that a single layer of Evo still tends to look a touch better than two layers of Miyabi coat, and as I mentioned, I still think Miyabi coat looks quite fantastic. The next test was evaluating the slickness or lack of friction that these coatings create on automotive paint. Starting with Kamikaze Miyabi coat, I tend to say that it's fairly on par with most ceramic coatings here, certainly being able to create some improved slickness compared to bare paint, but as with most ceramic coatings, it won't be quite as slick as your average wax or sealant. In complete contrast, Nova Evo is a little different in that respect. And compared to most other ceramic coatings, it does tend to leave quite a surprisingly slick feel to the paint. Now it's definitely not as slick as many waxes or sealants, but as a ceramic coating, it's definitely one of the slicker ones to the touch. So onto some water behaviour testing to evaluate the hydrophobic performance of these two coatings, starting with the first single layer test panel. Now to start with, and hopefully as you'll see, both these coatings are displaying good, solid water behaviour in relation to the speed of which they're sheeting the water and the contact angles of the water bead droplets. So all in all, they are both performing relatively well and in line with what I'd expect from a quality ceramic coating. And as I mention all the time, the way I like to film these videos is so you guys can clearly see the footage and also judge the results for yourselves. But as I continue to introduce more and more diverse water spray patterns on the panel, it does start to become apparent that Nova Evo is definitely performing a little better than Miyabi Coat, as it's able to consistently sheet the water at a faster rate, and it's also displaying more propped up pearl-like water beads. The last test was a chemical resistance test to try and evaluate and predict these coatings resistance to environmental contamination and exposure. The chemical used was Carpro Multi-X at quite a strong 1-2 to two concentration and as per usual I'm going to start by lightly hitting the panel with the chemical and then start to get progressively more and more aggressive with each subsequent application to see what it's going to take to break down the hydrophobic behaviour of these two coatings. Now to start with, both coatings did fairly well with the initial chemical hits, taking into account that it is a strong ratio of the chemical. But as I got more aggressive with multiple applications, you'll hopefully be able to see that Miyabi coat did start to lose its positive hydrophobic behaviour quite noticeably, with slower sheeting rates, while although Nova Evo was still affected to some degree, it actually held up quite well throughout the entire chemical resistance testing.
Now as we start to have a look at the hydrophobic behavior and chemical resistance testing on this second test panel with two layers of each coating, I'll start by saying the Kamikaze Miyabi coat performed much better here, especially in the chemical resistance test, as it basically took me twice as many hits with the chemical to break it down, though the water behavior was still more or less the same. Whereas Nova Evo performed relatively similar here, with perhaps just a very slight improvement compared to the previous test panel. Now the results were still the same in respect to Evo displaying slightly better hydrophobic behavior and a greater resistance to the chemical, but it was actually much closer here compared to the previous test panel, which I believe has more to do with Miyabi coat really benefiting from that second additional layer, whereas Nova Evo just seemed to mildly benefit from that additional layer which is completely understandable, but was still interesting to see. So as you guys have a look at the rest of the testing on this panel, I'll just sum up this video with my personal thoughts. Now, Miyabi Coat has been around for a while, and I actually first tried it many years ago while I was still a mobile detailer. Back then, I think it was quite unique and revolutionary for the fact that it was just so easy to use. While most other coatings back then had kind of awful user experiences, at least by today's standard. But the thing is, a lot's happened in the world of ceramic coatings since then, where most coatings today aren't just easier to use, but they also tend to look and perform much better than they ever did. I think it's a real testament to Kamikaze that Miyabi coat was made so well back then and has really stood the test of time unchanged. But whereas it really used to be quite a unique top tier coating back then, the competition has really caught up. And although I think it's still a great coating today, it may be time for Miyabi 2.0 if Kamikaze wants to continue to be at that top tier level. Now if I'm being completely honest, as a standalone single layer ceramic coating, Kamikaze Miyabi coat is fine and it looks, feels, behaves and performs okay. However, when you take the time to apply a second layer, Miyabi Coat just seems to massively benefit from this, and I'd actually say that it seems to perform almost twice as good with two layers, which is a little uncommon. So what I would say is that if you're going to spend that money on Miyabi Coat, and you do want to see that two year durability claim, make sure you do layer it, or else you're really not going to unlock the great benefits that this rather nice ceramic coating has. And if you're feeling rich enough, I know that most Kamikaze fans love two layers of Miyabi coat, followed by a top layer of ISM. Nova Evo just couldn't be more different from that perspective, as it just lays down so thick to start with, and it looks and performs amazing as a single layer, with not all that much benefit to be had by layering it. Now there's no harm in layering it if you wish, as if by chance your first layer isn't perfectly applied, then a second layer will address that, and also perhaps give you a little more durability and performance. But when you take into account that Evo is a little cheaper to start with, and one bottle can do two cars quite comfortably, its value does become quite exceptional when you consider its impressive performance. Now, there's no shortage of ceramic coatings on the market, most of which will come in at a lower price point than these two offerings. But when you take into account and appreciate all the development and testing that must have gone into these two coatings to create such a beautiful user experience, matched to fantastic looks, behavior, and performance, you start to appreciate that both these brands must have worked extremely hard to create two rather exceptional consumer-based ceramic coatings that can actually rival some professional grade coatings. Which one is best, or are these two coatings really worth the extra money? That's a decision everyone has to make on their own, based on their own needs. And although I appreciate that no single test or review is perfect or definitive, I do hope that this is a helpful video for some of you out there. I'll end this video by saying that I find it interesting how when I review a product that favours a certain brand or fans of that brand, I get a lot of praise from them telling me how thorough and unbiased it was. Yet, when the opposite happens, those same individuals or brands tell me how my video was flawed and subjective. I know that the vast majority of you guys aren't that way and appreciate me sharing information and my personal experience and opinions with these products, even though we are all to some degree biased as human beings. But I thought I'd just share that, maybe to highlight that some people need to check their own biases before they start accusing others of the same thing. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. 
please share this video, like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon. Those three words are spelled out in your eyes. But before I go on, say something. Just don't